Hello everyone, how good of you to join and welcome to, well, Siege Survival Gloria Victis, a new game coming out, well, today. And if you know this war of mine, then this game is pretty similar as it is the same, you know, context, but just in the medieval era. And it's looking really promising and very polished at this point. So let's just have a look around and get into a new story mode. As we can see, we can start with a few scenarios that we could go for. Now let's get into the story mode first and after that if the game is fun we're going to have a challenge run as well. There it begins. Alrighty, quite the dramatic intro, so this is the context we're under siege. We were just starting harvest when the Izmirs struck out of nowhere, catching us off guard. Horns of war sounded throughout Idring and the smoke-filled city streets ran red with the blood of its citizens. The savage warriors from Kargild had invaded our home. And the town guard fought bravely, but the Izmirs were too many. Before long, the raiders were in the main square and the city center stood in flames. All we could do was send a messenger out to summon aid, while the outnumbered guards focused on protecting. Um, focus on protecting the fleeing citizens or focus on protecting the workers salvaging supplies? Let's go with the fleeting citizen. In an act of selfless sacrifice, the guards gave their lives to aid the citizens. The survivors soon found shelter within the cold castle walls, safe from the slaughter for the moment. Those who could join uh, joined the castle crew to prepare for the defense. And we're probably one of them, I guess. The bloodshed continued unabated. Street by street, square by square, the Izmirs overran the city. Um, we thought things couldn't get any worse when we glimpsed a monstrous figure, the barracks were destroyed. Ah, let's go with the monster. Sounds a bit more promising. And the Cargills were led by the infamous Nameless Champion. Nothing I'd seen in my whole life was more terrifying than this beast-like figure. We'd all heard tales of the huge northerners, but nothing prepared us for the sight of this monstrous man walking up the street of our city. In our hearts we abandoned hope. And we took shelter in the keep and took stock out of the situation. Supplies were limited, no doubt the Eastmeres would soon attack again. And the castles, the only part of Edring still uncaptured, was now under siege. And well, it's up to us to hold Bastion and defend it. And there we are now in the game itself. So the game is kind of like divided in two parts. Uh, we have the Bastion part, a ruined castle for the moment that we need to upgrade. Um, and on the other hand, we do have then the night city where we do need to adventure out during the night time. Now we have the first character here that is our Flint, a worker. Um, we will have several characters over the course of the game, but Flint is the beginning. And there's someone that we need to talk to. You recognize the man before you, it's Bertram, a local carpenter. You're relieved to see he survived, it's clear however the events of the last day have scarred him in some terrible way. He just sits there, seemingly unaware of your presence, shivering and pressing his hand on his chest. Examine him. As you check him for wounds, you notice something in his tightly clenched hand. It's a small scourged doll, you suddenly realize this man has lost his family. And there is nothing you can do for this kind of pain, still perhaps a warm meal might snap him out of a state of shock. However, the kitchen was destroyed by Ismir trebuchets, you'll have to build a fireplace first. Alright, there we got the first um, mission right away. Right, so prepare a warm meal and for that we do need to find some materials and build uh, a stump. Right, so we can't even do that anything. We do have some debris here at the moment that we can do. Um, Flint, our own worker he's rather sad at the moment <laughs> um, I wonder why 
right? And we do find some wood and fibers as the beginning, as something that we might find here. Oh, I think that's it, though. Um, and now we need to go to the, the storehouse right away. Well, let's have a look at the storehouse. We do get these uh, tutorial messages. Um, the storehouse and here we do now have some several options. Uh, the first one is the stump that we should be building. Um, and we have, oops, let's just build the stump rather central because we're going to need this quite often. And it's a rather cheap building anyway, right? So our own guy is now crafting that very first bench. And coming up now. There it is. And now we need to chop some wood. So we don't have a lot of materials at the moment. Um, we need to scavenge then some later on. But for now we have uh, the firewood, the planks and... Yeah, well actually... Right, we have two times the firewood in here and then the planks down here, right? So chop some, uh, some wood would be our first one. Next mission we do have is some finding some raw food. So luckily there's just uh, some smaller bags close by. So let's just have a look around. We need, of course, to renovate all of that here and make a living village out of that again. Fibers, rotten food, unfortunately. And now we need to build a fireplace with for the materials that we just gathered to make some food out of that. And there we have the fireplace. It needs six materials. So let's just have a look around. There is a nice spot around the streets to build some cozy little fire. Lucky I don't think we have any snow incoming for now. So that should do the trick. Economy summary we have as well so we can see what's going on in our economy and our central storage of what is in the game itself. And there we have it. And now we need to craft our first meal which will be a well, simple mean uh, meal. Yeah, that's basically it. Take some eggs. All right, we do have now the meal. So let's get over there. Bertram is still exactly where you left him, shivering and pressing the tattered doll to his chest. His eyes stare absently, pain frozen on his face. It's as though his mind just cannot escape what must have been his darkest moment. Let's feed him. He barely notices your presence, but you manage to make him eat bite after bite. You can see life coming back into him. Finally, he puts down the empty bowel and falls asleep. It's safe and let's let him rest. Bertrand's recovery would be so much better if we had even a simple bed. All right. Uh, the gate connecting the city to castle is damaged, but you recall there's a secret passage leading into the city. But wait a minute. Who is that man standing by the gate leading to the bastion? There we have someone new appearing now in our little court. The soldier standing before you is covered in blood, his eyes dim with exhaustion, the tunic on his armor torn to shreds. Only once he speaks, you recognize Galvik, an experienced garrison member. So we are going to know now the uh, certain characters that we have um, in this game, or that, well, are in our bastion. He's stunned, speechless by the loss of his aunt and nieces, yet another blow falling on a man already exhausted. But there is no time to grieve. Ismirs will attack soon, he says. We must resupply before it happens. Then he reveals that a group of soldiers is searching through the city as well. Okay, what do you need? We need arrows. There's a boyer. How about the boyer, uh, the boyer's workshop in the city? That's your chance. Alright, so we do need to find that. And the night has come. Now, in the night, we only have one character for now. But what we can do now is um, scavenge the city, scout, sleep or sleep in bed. So if we have several characters, we can decide who goes to sleep and what party kind of like goes into the city to scavenge, for example. Right? Only one character we have right now. Let's select him real quick. And we only also have one passage here right now that we have the city. And as we can see, there's quite a lot of spots. And of course, it's getting more dangerous, right? And we can also see what each of these districts has. So plenty of building materials, for example, in the golden corner. We can only select the passage. Um, we can also say what we take with us. Of course, the torch is always rather nice to have. And I think that's it for now. We certainly don't need a fertilizer on our trip. Let's start the scavenging. Alrighty, in the city we are now. And the city is rather dangerous, so what we can see right away is that we are having a noise level around us, so we are we might be attracting uh, the attention of some guards and stuff like that. 
Um, so we should be very careful about that. There is our point of exit then once again. And I think we do have a map. Yep. So we can see what is where. And we have a few up or a few missions right now. A torch we have for a bit of defense. No, nah, not really. It's only for light, right? The torch doesn't give us anything else. Oh, there it is. Very good. So now we have the torch there as well. Some wood, cloth and fiber we do need. There is actually something here and there seems to be a mission or some sorts. Search for arrows and find the Bowers uh, Boyer's house. A carcass piece needs to be processed and some wood. Very good. Let's continue to the next pile that we find over there. Search for arrows, cloth, uh, cloth and fibers we still need. We found some materials and wood. What's going on there? There is some hanged body or whatever that is. Yep. You have found the boy's workshop. Needless to say, the East Mears have been here. The building has been scourged and looted. Its owner hangs from, oh, that's the owner, <laughs> from a nearby tree, a dozen arrows sticking from his body. As you gaze on the destruction, a chilling wind reminds you why you're here to find arrows. Let's, let's step inside. You prowl through the devastated workshop, looking for the precious arrows among piles of broken parts and burned out furniture. Time passes, but you can't find any. Just as you're about to give up, you spot a flash in the dark under a broken roof beam. Could it be arrows <laughs> for the Bastion Defenders? And they're all yours. Very nice. We actually don't even need to craft them, right? So in that case here, we could just... Um, craft arrows then as well and pain shoots through your whole body suddenly it takes you ages to get free as you leave the workshop because it's about to collapse the boy's corpse has been taken down an old woman leans over the body in the shade of the tree she's sobbing exhausted and you guess she must be his mother she had risked her life to cut her son down bury him in a shallow grave um, so what do we want to do help her bury the corpse she has an axe or take the axe and leave so these choices we are going to be presented for quite often in this game. Let's help her. And she's startled as you see approach, but you see her relief in her eyes as she realizes you want to help. And she gives us a small sack of something. And in that we find some valuables and actually the bundle of arrows. Those we need to bring back. We still have two other missions though. The cloth and the fibers. So in that case... And also some vegetables. Hmm, fiber we have, cloth we have, vegetables. Those we can eat. There is something where we need a shovel for. So I can't, you know, scavenge through that. And then we just have another haystack. And over there another pile of rubbles. What do we find in here? Some fiber and greens and herbs. Very good. But we are full now on the inventory. I would though still really like to get some herbs, right? Because they help to cure illnesses and poisoning. Um, valuables are important. I don't think we are going to need the jar. Yeah, this is still something, right? Because that offers us food and food is something we need as well. This is very tricky in itself, but let's get the, rid of the, the meat. I think we are going to need more medicine at some point. Ah, uh, the next scavenging pile, we have some cloth. Unfortunately, I cannot take it. Uh, <laughs> no, I need to throw something away. Um, valuables might be what I could get rid of now. Materials. The arrows we we need let's get rid of the valuables because it's just one and take the cloth right so now we have everything that we need bring the arrows back we could of course now continue scouting ahead a bit here in the dark as we are over here right now there is another path that is blocked right so we do need a shovel for that that is something we don't have yet on this very first day lots of stuff there's some events happening over there but no idea what's going on I guess we need a shovel first in order to unlock these events then, right? Some more wood, some more herbs, and I'm off again. So for all we need to do really is click on that button, then, then we can go back to the castle. All right, we're back in the town, and we can now start a new day. So this was basically our first introductory night. Um, back in the city itself, we can now freely, you know, move the camera around again. Send the arrows to Bastion. That would be something now. So Bastion we have now as a new window popping up. And here we can see how we are doing so far, right? So 32 to 35. Um, and in order to make this one a bit better, um, we can send them, for example, some arrows. And thus we make our attack strength a bit better. better. This is something we send now over. We're taking a bit of time with that. And talk to Bertram would be our next goal. By the way, do we have a storage? 
it would be really good to have a storage kind of so where we could um, store all the stuff that we have in inventory because we are rather full or actually is it now automatically in the storage i think it is looks like it so i guess we need to increase it then it seems Bertram is feeling much better. The loss of the family has had a crushing impact on him that only time can fully heal. Nonetheless, finally, the carpenter has recovered from shock and is ready to rejoin the fight. It was Flint, right? He asked. I remember you visiting my workshop once or twice with Galvik. Thank you for help. Now we should take care of the animals and find fresh water. Bertram is right. Fresh water is paramount. Clear away the debris and repair it. Alright, so we have unlocked a second character now. Bertram, the handyman. And we can always just switch around between the two now here, right? So both of them have, of course, different specializations. This guy, Flint, is a worker. And Bertram is the handyman, so he can craft really well, right? So with him, we should probably look out for some crafting. There's also more piles of debris, so we can just, you know, put all of them now to use. Getting rid of that. For that, I think we do need a shovel, though, that we don't have at the moment. And some more materials. And some bandage. And water and materials. Okay, we still have to clear the debris blocking the hen house. So that's some valuables here. It wasn't this one here. That is the hen house though. Oh yes, very good. Now we have finished it. There is also a well that we need to ex uh, establish. Oh, even got an achievement from that. <laughs> Because the hands we can move now. You remove the debris blocking the well. Sadly, no, to no avail, the well's base has been crushed by the trebuchet projectile. The shaft itself is blocked and there's no way you could clear it out. And perhaps you could find some potable water in the city market under the cover of darkness. It's risky, but it's the best chance that we have. Search the city at night for clean water. We don't have water at the moment. Not so well, not so good. We still have something else. I'm um, tired and wounded. We need a bed in the in the keep, right? So our keep is over there. Let's just get over there and have a look. And there is a bed. We can construct the first one now. As we can see, Bertram is taking his time. Now, Flint was working through the night, so he's very tired. Um, he definitely will need some rest. He's thirsty and lightly wounded as well. Uh, for the wounds, I can definitely do something. And I can craft it. Flint has finished the bed in the meantime. Let's craft us a bandage. There we have it. And he's healing with that, right? So as we can see, for the next day we are fine. Or for this night, actually. He also needs to drink something. There we have the clean water for that. And Bertram... Hmm, he's depressed. Flint is fine. So he's got the water. You can go to bed. That's your bed now. And I think we should be going out to the night again. Search the night. Flint is wounded. Use makeshift bandage and then put him to bed. For the night. All right, let's skip until dusk and finish the first or well, the second day in that. Now we can decide once again, Flint goes to the bed, so sleep in bed. Um, of course, if he would sleep on the ground, his morale would go down, right? Because it's not very comfortable. Um, and Bertram can scavenge the city and we have to go back to the same place, taking the scorch, uh, the torch with us. Unfortunately, 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 I would love to get more inventory space, but nope. We don't have that at the moment. All right. Second time that we are here. Um, there's the torch. And we need to find clean water 10 times. Also collect items that will help the soldiers in Bastion to defend us. Of course, we can run as well. There is some fire here. There wasn't here before, I think. That's dirty water. Can cause poisoning. We need to boil it before it becomes clean water. Um, let's just take it with us for now. If we find something better, of course, we're going to throw it away. And there's the gate to the high city, the wealthiest district of the city used to be. Used to be because the gate struck by a trebuchet projectile has collapsed into rubble. We can't pass. The rubble is compressed and blocked by several collapsed ceiling beams. The way they are jammed, they could only be moved from the other side. Alright, nothing we can do here. There is another pile of rubble and we might... Ah, very good. That's actually... Is it the carcass piece that we threw away? <laughs> because that might be interesting. I think there it is though, right? That's the one. Yep, that's the valuables we have once again. And we can continue. 
we are continuing where are we there we are close to the debris that we need to clear before it's over and actually some clean water how good is that we found seven out of ten clean water that's basically what we need so far we cannot oh wait a second there's a fire i think burnt corpse we can get rid of that with a torch and we do have a torch and thus we can burn it away the well the corpse hopefully we're not burning away the stage there as well because that would be rather hurtful right as it's looking right now we are burning it away not very smart all right we can now clean or clear the debris up here or scavenging with some wood and fiber and also damage light armor there's some armor now valuables very good we can repair the armor at the workshop and of course we should get some armor if we want to go into the more dangerous areas where we need to fight as well then later on all right materials and wood but we can only carry five wood all right then let's let's just throw the remaining wood overboard because we have lots of that at this point Oh, and a shovel. How good is that? Let's get rid of the dirt water and use the shovel. We have a new tool and we can use that now. We found the remaining clean water. So that is our mission. We have finished. We can actually carry 10 of the clean water and take the clean water back. Now, of course, we could continue with the scavenging. But unfortunately, um, I'm really full on the inventory, right? And we have the shovel as well. So let's go back to the castle. And the shovel will keep the armor that we have there the damage light armor we can repair perhaps and yeah also take on the first foes then that might be um around the corner somewhere and the enemy assault approaches we must get ready for the worst the enemies are preparing to attack and we need to support our soldiers to help help them next day and the well i guess a an attack is incoming soon the first one um bertram is back of course he will be sleepy he's tired at least for now can we go to bed with him now? No. Flint is fully awake, so he's feeling fine again. He is hungry though and thirsty. So of course we could get them something to eat, like the vegetables there. But we could also cook this one at the, the fireplace, right? We do have the materials. So Flint is going to look out for that. While with um, Bertram, we might be looking out for some workbench or something like that. Craft the meal. At least one egg we have. And with Bertram, we are looking over there and just have a look. Workbench allows us to build the tools and the arrows. The butcher table, we already have some food. Can we build both of them? We could. We have 18 wood and 9 wood each it costs. Let's build the workbench. I think the workbench will be more important later on then. And we're just placing it next to this ruin there, next to the well. Nah, let's place it here. Right, so the next building is coming up and flint. Oh, and the enemy is firing siege engines. A flying rock can cause serious damage when it hits a character or workshop. Uh, but the rocks can be collected. And the defenders do everything they can to defend the castle um, against the invaders. The items you provide them give them a light hope of survival. Oh, well, very nice. The battle continues. Can we see the battle? Oh, I need to get away there. There is actually a rock coming down. Okay, so during the siege, I think we will just have to use my characters to, you know, avoid those incoming attacks and scavenge those rocks that we find at the same time. A rock. You can use it to patch up the walls. While the battle takes place, as we can see, uh, we have the upper hand right now. And what can we do about it? Can we actually help in any way? The firing projectiles. That's it for now, right? There's nothing else that happens at the moment other than projectiles. Oh! Over here. But I will certainly not be able to go up to the roof in any way. And the battle is over. It was a tough battle. We did it. We forced the enemy to withdraw from the walls with minimal losses on our side. We lost the arrows though, obviously. But that's it. Right, so that's the first siege. And of course those sieges are getting stronger and stronger than over time. 
Right, your bird run continues and you should also eat the meal now because you're rather hungry. That's that. You can also rummage through that debris that we found over there. Bertram is still continuing to build. Bertram, did you finish it? You did finish it. And there we have it now. As we can see, we could now go for the arrows. We could also go for uh, the tools, but for that we do need more planks. We have a lot of wood. I might use the wood now to get some planks. Like only two planks, perhaps. And with that, we could then craft the tools. Now night comes upon us um, rather, s well, surprisingly, I can't change that. And yeah, we have Flint. He's already tired though. I mean, come on, you slept. Um, Bertram, he's exhausted, so he's going to sleep in the bed. While with Flint, we're going to scavenge. And yes, we can take the shovel with us. We can take... Where's the torch? Oh, we don't have a torch right now. Okay. Then we scavenge without a torch. We don't need it really, I think. Right? This, the, the shovel is more important right now because with the shovel, uh, we can then get rid of some of the debris that are blocking the paths on our way to some other place. Alright, over here we have the blocked path um, that would unlock us the next district. Right? So we're here. Here, there's the that we started the whole thing and up here we would have a new district where we have some herbs but also events and i would like to find out more about these events so let's clear this debris with the shovel that we have we're most likely loosening the shovel shovel oh and look at that there is also someone roaming around oh boy we have a shovel as defense right now Okay, enemy patrols. The enemy guards patrol the city at night. Avoid their attention to remain undetected. If you stay in the field of view or make noise near them, they'll become aware of your presence. Yeah, then it's only a matter of seconds before you get detected, unless you just escape on time. I don't have any weapon now. I mean, I'm carrying some stick here, but that's it. We could hide. Oh, very cool. Very cool. We can hide there in the gold golden corner. There's some debris here. I can run, of course, when there's no one around, right? But that creates a lot of noise. Mm. Okay, it's just the usual stuff that we get over there. I cannot zoom out any further, though. So I cannot see how far away the guards would be. So in that case. Fiber, some herbal medicine. And look, yeah, there's an event. So that's something we can do. A plank, very good. Planks we need. Cloth we would need though too. Hmm, I have a lot of wood with me already. Uh, decisions, decisions. Let's get rid of the planks. Because the cloth is pretty, uh, pretty important. You enter a small square between the tenement houses. One of them used to belong to a wealthy fabrics merchant, but he and his family were massacred in the city market during the invasion. Through the broken window, you see this his, this house has been plundered, um, but then a weak light emerges from the shadows in a side hallway. Someone's there. A chubby woman in a simple work dress emerges from the hallway, uh, lighting her way with a candle. A friend, she whispers with relief. She doesn't even know me. You know her. Maud. Oh, okay. We know her. Maud owned a farm near the city. She quickly pulls you inside the hallway. What you see at the end is jaw dropping. It's a field hospital. I couldn't leave them like this, she says, as she looks at the patched up patients, citizens and soldiers alike. They needed help and I know a thing or two. I've dealt with animals for years. But Maud says her hospital is desperate for supplies, food, medicine, bandages. Maybe there's something we could trade. Oh trade with Maud. She's got, oh, she's got some armor. Very cool. She's got iron. Iron is something we could need. Hmm. Okay, Maud really doesn't want to trade with us. It doesn't matter what I choose here. Um. Oh, planks you would like to get for all of that, but come on. She doesn't even want to give me some plank. There is no chance for, oh, the armor? Alright, that's interesting. Now it's working. The iron bar, can we do with that? Hmm, no. Can I do only with the iron bar, perhaps? Let's just try this one. Nope. Uh, I would like to get this broken heavy armor, though. Right? We trade a lot for that. Okay, she's still happy. She's still happy. Okay, fiber she still wants, though. Let's make a deal. And we got it. We got some 
armor that we can patch up again and use then for some well re repairing or something like that more water water is always important and uh, let's get the hell out of here we still have two slots though and i think there was a guard over there now waiting for us so we will have to be careful about that guard um there it is there's got to be something useful here flint is already really experienced when it comes to all of that scavenging there's some rotten food that i'm not taking and where was the guard return oh day is almost over we have to hurry up valuables fiber materials all right let's get back home all right, as we return, it's Galvig again. He looks even worse for wear, uh, for wear than before. The last fight must have been intense. He tells you there are wounded soldiers after the Izmir's assault. The defenders desperately need bandages. Also, their weapons need repair. That's not the worst of it. Scouts have seen soldiers of the Sangmar Empire to the south. Sangmar. Is the Sangmarian fleet here to attack our lands or are they going to strike the Izmir's back? For now, they are a great unknown. Having told you all he could, Galvik turns to return to the Bastion. Looking at him stumble in exhaustion, you can only wonder if you will see him again after the next battle. Poor Galvin. And the knight was calm. So this is also the same like this war of mine. Like you have this knight is calm. There's probably going to be some invaders at some point. Um, anyway, Bertram. He's very thirsty. So let's give Bertram something to eat, uh, to drink. And... Flint also wants something to drink, and he's going to the bed then most likely. Well, we can do something with Bertram. Like... Like what? We could... I wanted to craft something with him. Alright, doing that here, fodder is going to give us a bit of food for the hens. We could also give them rotten food. No, I'm not doing that. But greens and herbs... Not all of them, please. Ten? Even that is too much. Wait a second. Go back there, please. Alright. Step by step, we can do this. So that we're feeding them now. And we can do the same thing with the piggies, most likely. There's also fertilizer here. Let's feed the piggies. They're starving already. And they actually have a name. So Gwendolyn and Norman. Right. Oh. Okay, they do need a whole lot of that. Vegetables. Rotten food. Oh, we can still make animal fodder out of it. We can probably also just use it directly as food, right? Even though I think with animal fodder, it might be wor more worth it. So let's just have a look at that. And... Bah! I actually don't want to use that many herbs because we need them for our own people. One egg. It's not doing much. Vegetables. Nah. All right, let's give that to the pigs for now. And find our craft makeshift bandage build herbal workshop build a herbal workshop would be the next one find a craft the makeshift band that is something we've already done right so the the bandages that we would like to do and deliver three meals to the soldiers at the bastion all right for that we do need to craft however some food or cook some food all right we can actually craft two meals right now can we no we need wood firewood so let's chop all right, Herbal Workshop is on the way for our bandages that we need. Um, at the same time, we can now craft or cook some food then because the soldiers want some food. Ooh, actually a lot of stuff to do right now. Take the broken weapons from the soldiers. Where are the soldiers? Um, I'm, I will like to re make this repair table. Um, and with that, we can repair armor, but taking it up, that's something else. And makeshift bandage, there it is. Let's craft the first one. Now crafting the meals, let's just have a look. Oh, there's also a damaged weapon which can be repaired. We found an axe, or well, the soldiers found an axe, that is, um, that we can then repair. We still need some meals, so that we have the meals for that. Um, so we should be... Oh, no, we don't have any more firewood. Now Bertram is probably can do that. And Flint, in the meantime... Let's just have a look what we can do at the herbal workshop there. Probably, you know, crafting some more bandages of what we need. Makeshift bandage. We also have the ma medicine. Let's craft one bandage for now. Because it's probably what we will need. And Bertram. My sexy Bertram. My handyman. He's crafting 
the planks. And I think we have the tools. So since we do have the tools now, yep, I should be able to craft what I wanted. The workshop where we can repair armor that we find. And we do have an axe and we do have... Uh, we do have an armor. There it is. No! Tools. I need tools. Where did I consume tools? Oh, for the herbal workshop. All right. That was the one. So we do need to craft one more tool, actually. That's over here. So that we have that. It's rather easy anyway. Meantime, we can now send the three meals to Bastion. This is going to help them a bit. They will also... Let's also give them a bit of water there, right? We have... Oh, no, not that much. Right. We do need a bit of water for ourselves. They would also love to get a few arrows. I don't have that, unfortunately. And, oh, rocks. Very good. With rocks, we can increase the fortification status of Bastion again. And as we can see, we are increasing the attack power of Bastion by plus two. And we would be thus stronger again than the attackers. So that's something. Very good. Very good. We're crafting and flint. You can continue. Resume the work. Where's Bertram? Oh. Oh, yeah. He delivered. Built the repair workshop that we have now. There we have now the tools finished. And now we can build the repair workshop. And I would really like to get my axe. And use it against the guard. Repair workshop. There we have it. A nice little workshop. Once again, let's put it there somewhere close to another building. Because I think... It's a bit safer there. Over there. And there it is. Very good. Our workshop. And let's have a look at that. And there is the axe, actually. There's also this light armor. For that, we do need a bit more fiber, though. The heavy armor? We need to upgrade. All right. But the axe we can do. So let's get us our first weapon. And Flint is continuing with the firewood in the meantime. Oh, no. Deliver it back to the soldiers. I don't want to. I want to use it myself. But we're increasing the, the, the attack power once again by plus one at least. As the next day is dawning. Actually, as the next night is coming. He's very tired. Okay, Flint will not go with us in the night. And Bertram is hungry. Oh, by the way, I think it's a bit too late for that now. But I would love to get a shovel. Or craft me a shovel or a torch. The torch needs fiber. Everything needs fiber, right? And iron bars, we don't have that. So far, so good. The next day is over. Night will be coming now. I hope you enjoyed this one. Stay tuned.